Hello everyone, welcome back to my Know By Ear. In today's video, I'm doing a little bit of a wardrobe prediction for the upcoming fall winter season and going through the items that I predict will be the most worn in my closet versus the least worn in my closet so that at the end of the season, I can compare with the data that I'm gonna take from my everyday outfits and see if I'm right. So I originally conceived of this video as more of a brand focused one where I was going to go through all the pieces from the brand Cezanne, maybe do a little bit of Jerf Avenue as well. Those are my top two brands in my closet and they're both brands that was influenced to buy. So if you want to see a more brand focused video kind of version of this, let me know. I was going to talk about how much I've worn the pieces, how much I thought I was going to wear them versus their practical use value, whether they were good purchases or not. And in the end, decided I wanted to do a more general kind of closet review to at least start out with. So if you want to see the brand focused one, let me know. Or if you think this one <laughs> sufficed, then you can let me know that as well. I'm going to start with the pieces that I think are going to be most worn in my closet for this upcoming season. And I capped it at 10. I think I have 10 of each and I did not include shoes and bags or other accessories because I kind of consider those separate and I do tend to rotate through all of my shoes and bags. While there might be one or two pairs of shoes or bags that are more worn, I would hypothesize that they all get used at least once or twice and some of them might have more use value than others. But unlike with clothing, I think they will all get some decent rotation value and some of these clothes will probably not even get one wear over this season. Okay, so starting with most worn, I'm gonna start with the t-shirts because I have four of them here, I believe. And I do think, oh, there's the other one. And I do think that there might be a couple more that are not in this collection that will also get quite a few wears. So the first one is my cobalt blue t-shirt, just a plain t-shirt, but instead of having like a plain white tee, this is a plain cobalt blue tee. And I think the color makes the statement <laughs> that I prefer to have in my clothing versus, you know, like the plain white tee doesn't really make that much of a statement. This one has the basic shape, the non-statement making shape with the statement making color. And that's something I think I love about it. The next t-shirt I have is a band tee. It's from the ZZ Top show, which I did see in Omaha. The date's on the back. So I guess I saw it on April 12th. So I saw them in April, 2023. It was an amazing show. They were really old. They're still really old. They're still alive, but um, great guitar players. So the shirt holds some really nice memories as well as just being a nice, you know, it's a basic black shirt with some details that make it pair really well with my kind of khaki pants as well as jeans and yellow sneakers. So it kind of pairs well with my, some of my favorite accessories. I also have a black band tee from the Black Keys and the graphic on that one is just white. So I suspect I'll wear that one a lot as well, especially when I don't want to pair it with some of the accessories that go with this particular shirt. The next shirt is my Van Gogh, the irises. And again, the purple details on this pair very well with some of my favorite accessories, my shoes that have purple details, my purple blazer, my purple pants, and it's just an easy to wear kind of piece. You'll notice that four out of 10 of my suspected most worn pieces are t-shirts. So there's a trend here. And last but not least, you could probably already guess this if you've been on my channel. I suspect that this penguin shirt, the extra large one, the oversized one, I put away the medium one, actually. You might have seen that already. I suspect that this will be one of my most worn pieces. And I suspect that it's been one of my most worn pieces for the beginning of this year as well. I just wasn't tracking all of my wardrobe wares <laughs> as diligently. So I would not have the data to report on that. So let's see if I'm right. Four graphic t-shirts. Incidentally, my plain t-shirts, the non-graphic ones, have kind of become more homeware. I still want to get wear out of them, but they don't do a lot for me when I put them together in an outfit to go out in, if that makes sense. All right, next I've got a couple pairs of pants. So the first pair is my gray dress trousers. Oh, they are not buttoned up. There we go. The gray dress pants by Jerf Avenue. And these are my favorite pair of dress pants. I have the khaki pair as well, or the oat colorway. And I have some black ones that I wear for performing. But the gray ones are I think the nicest balance for me of like a day color, everyday color, because I don't love wearing black when I'm not playing a concert. So the gray I think is my favorite out of all the wide-legged pants. I've got a bright blue pair, I've got an oat pair, I've got black, I've got gray. Although this silhouette in general is possibly my favorite for pants, I just have a suspicion that this color is gonna be it. I do think I will wear the other couple of pairs that I have as well. None of those are in my least torn pile down here. I just am curious to see if I'm correct that this pair will be the most worn. The next pair of pants are these utility pants. 
which are kind of the khaki color. So these are like a super comfortable pair of relaxed denim pants. They're kind of a denim material, but they're not blue. I think that's another thing I like about them because for whatever reason, blue jeans are just not that exciting to me. Despite the fact that I have three or four pairs, maybe I did put away another pair of jeans in my summer declutter. So the fact that these are not blue kind of is more exciting to me. The fact that they're a relaxed fit also appeals to me. The fact that they're kind of a similar color to the oat blazer that I have, but they're not dress pants. So it kind of helps me have that juxtaposition between a fun piece or a fun silhouette and a more polished piece like a blazer. So I suspect that these are going to be a most worn pair of pants this season as well. I also have a pair of white denim relaxed pants and I'm curious to see which one gets worn more out of these and those. I voted for these today, but the data will tell us what the truth is at the end of the season. Okay, next I have a button down and it's the blue stripe button down. I just think out of all the button downs and blouses that I have, this is gonna be the one that gets worn the most. It's kind of the most classic, most easy to wear perhaps. I like the fit of it a lot, how it's not too long, how the sleeves are long enough, how the blue is kind of present enough that it's doesn't look like it's a white shirt. You can kind of tell against the white, like you can definitely tell that there's a pattern on this one. I have another one of these exact shirts with a rainbow stripe pattern, but the pattern is so light that it almost looks white under certain conditions. So I just think out of my button downs and blouses, this is going to be it, <laughs> the one that's most worn. I have two sweaters. And again, this one's a very practical, comfy one. It's just a thrifted Ralph Lauren men's sweater in gray. It's kind of a flat cotton knit, so there's no cable knit or anything like that. And it's just a super easy practical piece to wear. In my future life, where I'm not as prone to getting little hands staining my clothes, I can see that this might be an elevated homeware option to the sweatshirts, the athletic wear that I tend to wear now. If you saw the video of things that I actually wear <laughs> these days, covering what I wore over summer, it's probably going to look the same over winter because indoors the climate's not really going to change that much. Probably going to be wearing the same sweatshirts and sweatpants inside when I'm not at work. But in the future, I can see this and the white version of this with cable knitting that I do have. Maybe those two will become my future homeware sweaters. So so for practical use value, I think this is going to get a lot of wear. And then this cardigan by Cezanne. I think this and the navy blue version of this, I have two of the identical sweater. I think these two are going to get a lot of wear. I wore them a ton last year in the fall and winter. They're just so easy to wear. You can have a shirt on under or not. I think it's wiser to <laughs> show up to work with a shirt on under in case you get hot and have to take it off. But the V isn't so deep that you have to have a shirt is what I'm trying to say, I guess. So you can layer it, you can open it up and have a t-shirt or you can have it buttoned up and wear it as a top. It's just kind of versatile in that way. But I love this kind of pop of red and have shoes to match. I've got flats that are red and Ugg boots that are red for the really cozy winter days. And the navy cardigan goes with everything that this red one does not go with. So that one is kind of on this list as well, but I chose to <laughs> show the red one today. In general, from Cezanne, the sweaters, I would say, are the best category of clothing to purchase from them, and the category that I've had the most success with over the things that I've purchased from that brand. The last item of clothing that I think is gonna be most worn is the gray blazer. So again, with the gray pants, I think this color, despite the fact that I love the purple one more. I just think this one is going to be the more practical and more reached for option. It goes with all of my t-shirts, it goes with all of my pants, and I think the color being darker than the oatmeal one that I have, the oat, is just a little bit more flattering on me and therefore I reach for it more often because I feel better in it. I did a little chat about <laughs> the concept of clothing and style being flattering or being fun and this is one of those instances where the flatteringness of it does create better use value in my wardrobe. Now, on to the category of things that I think are not going to get a lot of wear. I'm actually going to start with dresses because this is kind of the category of debatable functionality. These dresses are things that may or may not be appropriate for fall and winter, but they certainly could be if one style was as such that they would wear these things. I'll just go ahead and show them so you can see what I mean. So these two dresses are slightly more formal. This dress I've only actually worn for a performance. It would make a great wedding guest dress. I was planning to wear it if I went to my friend's wedding in September. Alas, I did not. But it's the kind of dress that you could wear it by itself for a performance or a wedding or something like that. Or you could also layer it. You could wear it as a skirt with a sweater or something like that. And I have a pink sweater that would probably go well with this. You could even do it with something like my cobalt blue sweater for like a nice color contrast. 
However, I just don't think I'm going to do that. This is another Cezanne piece, and I think it's my most expensive one. I think it was around $245, if I remember correctly. It's made of silk, so it's a beautiful piece, and I'm not about to declutter it, but I just hypothesize that I'm not going to wear this, even though I have visions of how I could wear it in the fall and winter, right? With a sweater, with tights, with maybe some boots, with some sneakers even. If I was going to do a bold look, I could do my blue sneakers or blue Birkenstocks even with the cobalt blue sweater and this in between. I mean, that could be a look. And maybe I'm convincing myself to try it this season, but I just don't think, especially if I hadn't done this video, I don't think I would have reached for this at all. And some of you might be saying, that's a summer piece. That's a spring summer piece. I'm personally of the belief that I want to wear most of my clothes all the time. And because this is a longer dress, you totally can wear it layered up for cooler seasons. I could understand how some of my lighter linen dresses, you can't really layer them up for fall and winter without it being awkward. Some of my short cotton dresses, you can't really layer up as well for fall or winter and not have it look a little bit strange. But I do think that this dress could be an all season dress if one wanted to get the most value out of it. And I do want to get value out of it, but I just, I just think I'm not going to. Second dress is the same kind of thing where it kind of reads as a formal dress, maybe a cocktail dress. It's like a midi length, but you could also wear this as a skirt. It is one of those versatile garments where it works as a skirt and a dress. And you could also wear it to a wedding. You could also wear it to a performance. And I have worn this as a skirt with a t-shirt before. I like the look. But I just think, once again, I'm not going to reach for this very often. I just think my style is as such that I don't prefer these things, even if I thought I would when I bought them. And that's the other kicker here. When I bought this, I thought, ooh, I can wear that as a skirt. I'll get so much use out of it all year round. And I just don't think I'm going to. This is the Jerf Avenue piece. The last piece is the Ghani dress, the striped one. In fact, if I wanted to do truly least worn items, I might better show the leopard print one, but that one is actually in temporary purgatory because I'm seeing if I miss it at all. I was talking about perhaps altering it into a top earlier this year, and I've kind of reconsidered and thought that perhaps if I'm not going to wear it, I should just pass it on or think about passing it on. So both of the Ghani dresses perhaps are, I suspect, pieces that I will not reach for. I really want to wear this one more. I love this blue one. And I like the zebra pattern. I think the leopard kind of has a danger of being like a sexier connotation, even though it's not a sexy dress, like it's a high neck and puffed sleeve. So it's not really that shape. But I think something about the leopard pattern versus the zebra pattern makes me more comfortable to reach for this one. But I just think I won't. And hopefully I can prove myself wrong, but <laughs> that's why this one is here. So three dresses. I didn't have any dresses in my suspicions of most worn clothing. So there's something to note as well. When I put on outfits <laughs> to go out in, dresses and skirts are not my first pick. Now I have some tops here. I have quite a number of tops actually, four different tops. Although in practicality, they're all pretty similar. So the first two are these long sleeve form fitting tops. This is the skims in kind of a teal blue. And every time I've worn it, I've worn it a couple times on this channel. I've actually liked how it looks. I think the color works on me and it's comfortable, but I just don't gravitate towards this kind of tight long sleeve top. I also have this black sweater. Again, a tight long sleeved sweater. Every time I wear it, I think, wow, I look pretty good. <laughs> I like this form fitting silhouette, especially with one of my wide leg pairs of pants, but I'm just not excited by these pieces of clothing. And again, going back to that conversation of trying to look the best versus have fun, these are pieces that if I really cared about looking the best, I would probably wear these all the time because not to toot my own horn, but I think they look really good with a looser bottom. And I think they really flatter my figure. I'm one of those people that's quite small up top and kind of bigger on bottom. So having a top that kind of shows the shape and then a bottom that skims over. In fact, I think these would actually make kind of a cool outfit as well. But alas, I don't tend to reach for these tight long sleeve tops. And then the next two are tight short sleeve tops. So one of them is my navy blue Cezanne shirt that again I wore in this video during style week and I like how it looks. I like the navy, I like the neckline. I think it looks objectively very good on me. And the other piece is this gray turtleneck. I did actually wear this several times last season, especially layered under things just to have that turtleneck. And I think it does a great job in balancing out lighter shirts. In fact, this could even look good under a button down to kind of bring that contrast and objectively make it look more flattering as far as color seasons and contrast levels. But once again, it's just a tight, 
form-fitting shirt. And historically, if I'm just grabbing and going without putting too much thought into my outfits, I will reach for a graphic t-shirt or an oversized sweater. So I can take this video, Alexa, take this video, watch this back and edit it, and use this as a sign to try to reach for these more often. Maybe you will feel like you look really good and you can still have fun with aspects of your outfit even working with these pieces. A note to self. I think that was seven pieces out of the ten. I have two bottoms and kind of by extension three bottoms. The first one is this skirt, which again you could say, oh that's a summer spring piece, it's a skirt. But I again I believe that one could layer this with tights for fall winter even though it's a lighter material, even though it's got a slit. I think it still looks good with tights. I have worn it with tights before. It goes really well with my tall white boots, you know, tights, tall white boots, the skirt, and pretty much anything on top, and I think it makes a really nice look. However, last season I wore this once with that particular look, and I just don't think I'm going to reach for this very much, even if I wish I were the kind of person who would rock a mini skirt to work more often. I don't work in a formal environment, so I, especially as long as I have tights on, I can really get away with stuff like this. It's not an issue. People aren't going to look at me funny for that. Likewise, I have a gray version of this skirt as well. So this is kind of like the bonus version, you know, like I had two of the same sweater. I have two of the same skirt. I also think I'm not going to wear this a lot. It's basically identical. It's just in the same material as the blazer. I wish I would wear this more. I think it makes a great look even paired with the blazer, you know, like the unexpected mini skirt suit moment. However, I just don't think I'm gonna do it. Next is one of my pairs of jeans. It's the skinny jeans and I highly suspect that the only time I wear these will be if I'm on a date with my husband, which since having three kids now happens less and less, or perhaps if I want to tuck my pants into my cowboy boots. And to be honest, I tend to wear those boots more when I have tights or leggings on, so I haven't needed to pull out the skinny jeans that often. It might happen, but that's how I suspect these are going to get worn if they get worn. Just the tight pants are not something I find super comfortable right now. Even with the stretch of these, it's just something I've kind of turned away from. I'm not going to declutter these out of my wardrobe just because I think they fill an important spot of things to not buy. You know, I don't need to buy any slim skinny pants because I already have a pair, no matter how trendy they might be or how good I think they look on somebody else. So they're kind of a protection item in my wardrobe. But I just suspect that I'm not going to reach for them that much. Last but not least is this beautiful suede jacket. And I talked about this on my channel already. I almost decluttered it or was thinking about decluttering it, reselling it, but it's just objectively beautiful. The clothing item itself, the jacket itself is beautiful. And as much as I'm trying to decrease my attachment to beautiful things, beautiful clothing, something about this jacket just makes it hard to let go of. And it makes me want to be the kind of person that wears this more. And again, even with what I've got on right now, simple white tank and jeans, and you know, count these among some of the most worn pieces in my closet. These are the infamous Tibby jeans and just a basic white tank. Obviously this is not a comprehensive video, I left out a lot of basics, but even with this outfit, this jacket just adds a little something. Sorry for the lack of full body shot in this one, but it just adds a little bit of something that honestly I can even just see in the viewfinder. I like how this looks and if I could just convince myself to reach for this more, I think it could become something really special in my wardrobe. And I'm hopeful that this is the year that that happens. This is the season that this jacket gets to shine and stop languishing on a hanger in my closet where it's been for the past two years. Now, final words for this kind of experiment here. I have a lot of clothes. I still have a lot of clothes. I've been working on decluttering and putting things away and kind of rearranging and reorganizing, but chances are I'm not going to have high wear numbers on anything in my closet because of the sheer volume of clothing that I have. And I'm not necessarily seeking to become a wardrobe minimalist this year or even beyond. I suspect my numbers will decrease slightly, but I am relatively happy with the idea of rotating through a larger number of clothing. It's not something that I think I need to change fundamentally about the way I operate in my wardrobe. So when I say something is going to be my most worn, it might only mean 10 wears in a season or in two seasons even, just because I have so many 
items in the middle point of these two categories, right? These are the things that I think I might not reach for even one time. These are the things I think I'll reach for multiple times, very frequently, maybe even once a week. There are many things in the middle here where I think, oh, I know I'm gonna wanna wear that, but it might only be two or three times. So it'll be interesting to see how the numbers shake down. It'll be interesting to see which pieces actually are the most worn, which pieces I actually never wear, if there are any. And I might have avoided that by making this video because in talking about the pieces that I think I will never wear, I actually kind of formulated outfits in which I would choose to wear them. So maybe I won't have any zero wear pieces this season. It remains to be seen. I obviously didn't include things like formal dresses or the one sparkly dress that I have that's only for going out. I don't think I could style that for work no matter what I tried to do, at least not for me. If you <laughs> want to wear sparkly dresses to work, I'm not saying you can't do that. You do you and all the power to you if you decide to do that. I would love to see somebody else rock a sparkly dress at my job. It's just not going to be me right now. So anyway, I'm going to conclude this video here. That was the 10 things I think I'm going to wear the most in the upcoming couple of seasons, plus the 10 things I think I'm going to wear the least. Let's see if I'm right at the end of the fall and winter season. I was going to say at the end of the year, but I guess in reality the winter season might end somewhere around February, March. So maybe I'll check back in in March to see how the data shakes down. This is also my message to myself to be consistent in gathering this data so you can report back on this later. Don't disappoint your viewers. Of course, it's always flattering myself to think that there will be viewers who care about this at that point, but Anyway, <laughs> I'm gonna wrap it up here. Bye for now, and I will see you in the next one. Oh, I also wanna hear about your clothes too. I wanna hear about what you think you're gonna wear the most, what you think you're gonna wear the least. If you have a good portion of things that you think you'll never reach for, and if you're doing anything to change that this year, if you think you've got a closet full of things you love and wear all the time, I wanna hear about it. I wanna hear your stories. I wanna hear what you think is a good size for a closet. Do you think you have the right amount or not enough? Anything you care to share, I love to read it below. Okay, <laughs> bye for now, again.